Vida. The destiny of America is always safer in the hands of the people than in the conference rooms of any elite. Sam Cedar. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. We must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. <laughs> Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? It is Monday, July 31st, 2023. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today... Marone Rappaport, editor of Local Call and writer at 972 Magazine. Also on the program today, new poll has Trump crushing DeSantis as his PAC has become a legal defense slush fund. Newly indicted Trump employee in the obstruction case apparently has no lawyer for his appearance today. That's one way to do it. Also on the program today, the Biden administration launches a new income-driven student loan program today. We'll give you the details. It's in beta, but you can sign up. Majority members of the group who wrote the Florida Black History Education Standards are fleeing from it now, yelling, it wasn't me. Day 31 of extreme heat in Phoenix, Arizona, as extreme heat is found to cost the economy billions in lost productivity. Just the beginning, folks. Also on the program today, Judge blocks Arkansas's law targeting librarians, at least temporarily. And a 10% uh, drop in black voter 2022 turnout begun to animate the Biden campaign. Twitter threatens a lawsuit against a nonprofit which tracks hate speech because, of course, all this and more on today's Majority Report. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much uh, for joining us at the uh, beginning of this week. We should say uh, up front, um, it is fun day monday it's fun day monday yeah. but also we all may be moving a little bit slower because we had a big uh, show dinner last yeah. night. yeah and i'm also like i don't know if this is coming off on camera i'm pretty sunburned like i'm i'm we're hot it's hot in the studio and it's also like i feel like i'm radiating heat maybe i'm contributing to it in some way um and we and we were out last night a uh, little little dinner with uh, the crew here yep uh we had a lot of fun um and uh I guess I, I feel like I drank more than anybody else. I don't know. I was I'd trying to get some. people. I, I feel yeah. like I ate and drank more than anybody else. I was trying to get everybody like. So I ordered about eight types of uh, oysters, <laughs> and uh, I think like four people at the table ate oysters. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. It was it was six. Six people. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well. I like those oysters. Yeah, I, never, Emma, Emma I was French trying to encourage yeah. everybody uh, to, to eat them. And, um, well, okay. Uh, I should also say uh, that tonight I'm going to be on the Letter Hacks show. It's going to be airing at 9 p.m. I think we're going to record it a little bit earlier. Uh, but, um, and, and Bradley, check your IMs here. I got something printed here. Um, uh, but folks should check that out. We'll put a link uh, to where um, uh, Letter Hack does it. It's... I. I, I'm not quite clear. As long as I don't have to do any uh, drawing, I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. You have to draw the letter hack. If, if I have to draw, it's going to be, um, it's not going to come out very well. Any of it, the podcast <laughs> or the drawing. Um, so uh, folks should know that. Um, let, let's get to this um, poll. It's a, uh, <clears throat> it's really amazing. And I think, you know, some people could, write it off to um, Ron DeSantis is 
uh, just a very unlikable guy, which I think is a legit response. But um, I think it also speaks to the, the attachment that the Republican Party has to any type of issue set. It all just seems like backfilling on some level. And, and, there, and to be clear, there's specific types of backfilling that work for the Republican Party. Yeah. But um, it does not feel like there is any sort of like uh, a, attachment to an issue set. It really is just sort of more like own the libs mm -hmm. and do it in a fun way, not in a... Um, I, I don't I don't even know how to really interpret this here. Pop With this. Memes. Uh, yeah, memes and just sort of like jokes, more jokes. Um, this is really amazing. Uh, if you look here, Trump, 54 percent, DeSantis, 17 percent. And then Pence, Scott, Haley, uh, Oof. Vivek sounds like cake. And Christy sounds like have some fun. I'll see you at the trail. Yeah, as uh, as Trump calls him fat slob. That's who was calling him over the weekend. Again, you know, Chris Christie is Christy a, sounds like pisty, uh, yeah. twisty, whatever. Uh, Christy, I'm not going to rap. Christie is a is a candidate for uh, you know never Trump Republicans, all seven of them, and um, for like the liberals who are watching cable news to enjoy having a Republican attacking him. Uh, we should say that even in a head-to-head -head, um, matchup, it's something like 64, I had it right here. It was something like 64, um, uh, what was it, a head-to-head -head matchup. Um, Mr. Trump was far ahead of Mr. Yeah, DeSantis. they didn't, I don't think they gave a specific number, but it was, um, oh, uh, I don't, uh, 62, oh, I'm sorry, 62 to 31%. Uh, in a hypothetical one to one, and that's um, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Yeah, you're gonna need. To <laughs> and it's not. Let's be clear. It's not like people need to. If they found out something new about Donald Trump, that that support would go away. The if 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 what we have seen over the past, I don't know what that noise was, mm -hmm. but if what we've seen over the past has been any has been indicative at all, every time. Um, Every time DeSantis introduces himself to another person, yeah, there's like a 50% chance that person's not going to like him at all at all. Never mind like the he's losing support the more he campaigns. So in a hypothetical one-to-one -one matchup, the best you could expect him to do, I think, is 62 to 31%. I got to figure it's more like 75 to 15% by the by the time that, but those people are not going to drop out. No. Chris Christie's not in the race because he thinks he can win. None of these people are in the race because they think they want to be on the stage and get some uh, points so that, you know, Chris Christie can get hired somebody somewhere and uh, Vivek can go back and start his rap career. Uh, career. Yeah. And not have it be in the rear view mirror. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, he really inspired me. He's going He's, yeah, but I mean, let's uh, let's <laughs> pop up the uh, the other one on the different ways in which uh, because he loses to Trump. Um, strong leader gets things done. Able to be uh, fun, likable, moral. Do we have one that that breaks down the um, we can just keep the scrolling. issues as well? Yeah. Uh, because the issues is really what does it. I mean, look here's the way. Go back to that one. The the fun. That's the one that they care about. Fun, exactly. Um, so DeSantis wins on... I don't know how he wins on likable. That's weird. I, I, GOP voters, I don't think, understand what people find likable. But also moral DeSantis wins. I mean, Trump well, is Well, I think they are talking likable. about two other people. Yeah. yeah, but they're wrong. Oh, no, they're wrong. <laughs> they're wrong. But, but, but they, that, they're projecting in that instance, right? That's why they don't understand the world. They like Trump. <laughs> yeah. They obviously like Trump. Um... I mean, and maybe likable is just like you're too soft. It's another way of saying too soft. Well, the other quotes in there show that essentially like they like DeSantis, but the core of it is that we've seen Trump do it. I mean, there are quotes yeah. in there from people saying like, you know, he's just, DeSantis has done this, but on a much smaller scale. And one of that was from a Republican um, from Florida. But it, it's it. 
so much about, about voting in the primaries. Can you envision a guy as president? And Trump's already been president and they love him. So right. that's it. Fifth up from there, right there. In the head-to-head -head matchup, Mr. Trump was far ahead of Mr. DeSantis among Republicans who accept transgender people as the gender they identify with and among those who do not. So in other words, <laughs> yep. regardless of where you are as a Republican on the issue of whether transgender people should be allowed to exist, despite the fact that uh, Ron DeSantis would have you believe that he has spent a lifetime, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, thinking about these issues uh, and talking about them, no Republicans uh, prefer Trump, uh, preferred DeSantis on that issue. <laughs> uh, among those who want to fight corporations that promote woke left ideology, and, and of course, uh, DeSantis is famous for saying the word woke. In fact, I think he has said it more, more times than maybe the rest of the world combined. Yep. Uh, and among those who prefer to stay out of what businesses do, uh, Trump wins. Uh, he went, like, in other words, on both sides of that issue, among those who who want to send more military and economic aid to Ukraine, and among those who do not, Trump wins. Among those who want to keep Social Security and Medicare benefits as they are, Trump wins. Among those who want to take steps to reduce uh, Social Security and Medicare benefits to reduce the uh, the the, uh, the deficit, which it wouldn't do, incidentally, Trump also wins. In other words, yeah. there's not a single issue yep. in which Ron DeSantis. And, and so the, the point is, is that this Republican electorate, and I don't know what it's going to look like in four years if Donald Trump is not running again. But this Republican electorate, they have become completely unmoored and untethered from any type of issues. It is all backfilling. It is all like hobby and backfilling to support Trump. That's it. Period. End of story. Um, they project onto Trump everything they want that, that is there. It completely is consistent. And if you look at like, they don't like um, DeSantis, they won't vote for DeSantis, even though he's more likable and more moral, according to their polling. Like if you wanted to create a composite sketch of an authoritarian not the authoritarian leader but an authoritarian follower Th this is it mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what issues he's I, I personally as a uh, follower care about doesn't matter if i'm for or against any of the things that have been talked about in that campaign i like trump better i don't he's dead. desantis is likable but he's not a strong leader. Yep. And he's not fun to follow. I'd go to the, you know, anti-woke cookout with him, but do I want him to lead the, the free world? Probably not. That's no. basically like what it is. Well, I, 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 do I want him to be my leader? Right. Uh, at the end of the day. And, um... It's really amazing how he's also just dropped like a stone since he's announced as well. The this, more people see of him, the more they don't like him or see him as presidential in that way. Trump leads DeSantis among Republicans who believe abortion should always be legal mm. and among those who believe it should always be illegal. Both. DeSantis signed a strict six-week abortion ban. Uh, Trump has cr criticized this too harsh, yet Trump enjoyed the support of 70% of Republicans who said they strongly supported such a measure. Yeah, it, it's cool when I do it. Um it's uh, it, it's fascinating and the real question for me well all you know once you get past 2024 and, and who knows what happens there but what what comes out of this mess like it, you know the the critique i think that you would hear from ideologues in the context of the democratic party which is is you're too quick to sell out your uh issue sets and vote for a Democrat who's not going to provide those. I mean, I, I think that it's just a sort of a, a generic secular, if you will, uh, critique. There's no way to even make a the critique like that within the, the, the Republican Party now. There is no watersheds. There's no litmus tests. Mm -hmm. The litmus test is, are you Donald Trump or not? And then that's it. And um, I mean... Their platform, 
again in 2020 was whatever he says. Whatever he says. Yeah. Literally, that's what they wrote practically. All right. Um, in a moment, we're going to talk to Marone Rappaport about uh, local uh, editor of Local Call and writer at 972 Magazine about what is going on in Israel, both from the perspective of Netanyahu's government assault on an independent judiciary the protests are they putting two and two together and realizing that when you have authoritarian uh uh racist nationalist and uh fundamentalist leadership they don't just come for the palestinian uh, rights they start coming for for everybody's rights um and also this cockamamie idea floated by thomas friedman uh, that apparently has some you know, some people in the White House thinking about like this uh, big multilateral uh, deal to yeah. uh, finally get, you know, Middle East peace. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but first, I should tell you, it is uh, exceedingly hot in the studio. I don't know what it is about this air conditioner and me. Uh, but uh, I got to say, I also have a problem in my apartment uh, with the air conditioning. I cannot tell you. I mean, it's been incredibly hot. It's hot everywhere. It's going to be get hotter as the years go on. Um, were it not for my cozy earth sheets that are uh, keeping me at least relatively cool, like there is not a, a pool of sweat mm -hmm. on my bed like there would have been, um, I would be in big trouble. And we have teamed up with Cozy Earth, and they are offering you a 40% off at Cozy Earth dot com slash majority you enter majority at checkout um and you can get some of this temperature regulating cozy earth bedding this is what you do you see your old sheets you take them off your bed if you want fold them up put them in the back of your closet get your cozy earth sheets put them on uh, your bed oprah said that they were one like their top like linens for like five years in a row um if you do not find that you are sleeping uh, cooler, more comfortable, you don't find these uh, sheets to be super soft, they will re re refund your purchase price plus shipping. They will ask you no questions. And you get this opportunity for a hundred nights. How does Cozy Earth do this? It's easy because their bedding does what I'm telling you. It is made from, what do they call it? Like viscose? Viscose, yeah. Visco Bamboo. Viscose? From bamboo. The bottom line is uh, bamboo. It traps less heat. It lets you sleep cooler. Uh, it lets you be comfortable year round. I like to sleep cool, folks. I, I don't, I don't want to be hot. Um, I've gotten out Cozy Earth sheets. And also, I've got their, uh, what do they call it? Leisure wear? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, like the, the jogger lounge pants. Wear. Lounge, lounge wear. wear. Lounge wear. Um, I never thought I was a lounge wear guy. Oh yeah, and it's rare I get an opportunity to actually lounge. Yes, but uh, I, I've been—you don't I've even been, need to. Just I've been lounge. seen wearing my uh, joggers round out, uh, you know, out and Very about. Very trendy. Very yep. trendy. Uh, Cozy Earth luxury bedding and uh, loungewear transforms lives by offering the softest, most luxurious, and responsibly sourced products in the world. Uh, they start with the best suppliers with an eye towards quality, responsible production, cutting edge technology, premium materials. Now. For a limited time, you can save up to 40% on Cozy Earth. Go to CozyEarth.com slash majority. Enter the code majority at checkout. Save up to 40%. Try for 100 nights. If you don't love them, you're not sleeping better, sleeping cooler, send them back. Yeah. They don't ask any questions. CozyEarth.com slash majority. Quick break. We'll be right back. Uh, and we'll be talking to Marone Rapid Rappaport.
We are back. Sam Cedar, Emma Viglin on the Majority Report on the phone, or I want to welcome back to the program, I should say, a Marone Rappaport, uh, editor of Local Call, writer at 972 Magazine. Uh, we're speaking uh, to Marone uh, from Israel uh, once again. Uh, Marone, I think the last time we spoke to you was a couple of months ago, uh, in March, maybe, was it? Oh, wow. Um, and at that time, there were massive protests over this plan to uh, really fundamentally undermine the independence of the judiciary in Israel. Um, since that time, they went back to the drawing board. They've come back with um, maybe a little bit uh, fuzzier picture, as it were, but one that is going to lead to the same place. Just give us an update as to like w what we've seen in terms of protests, and then we can move from there. In terms of protests, I think uh, the protests has, uh, have even uh, became become uh, stronger, wider, uh, and uh, more important, much more, I would say, I wouldn't say the word violent, but much more, you know, uh, uh, standing, uh, confronting the police, uh, blocking roads, uh, ready to really confront uh, 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 the police, the water cannon, uh, um, ready to get hurt. Uh, there were some uh, dozens of uh, protesters that were injured during the protest uh, and uh, hundreds of them that were arrested. Uh, the protests have definitely become much more intense and uh, uh, challenging to the government and to the police. Uh, in terms of the legal reform itself, um, the main, uh, it is true that the main issues that were part of the reform, like changing the committee to uh, that elect uh, judges uh, so that the, uh, the coalition will have total control over this committee and even more important uh, uh, depriving the Supreme Court the ability to undo uh, 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 laws uh, that were passed by the Israeli parliament these are no longer these were not passed they were it's not clear if they are frozen or off the table uh, uh, these did not pass what did pass is a more um, apparently a more technical uh, issue uh, uh, regarding plausibility uh, 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 whether uh, uh, a law could be uh, cancelled because it is not reasonable uh, uh, or plausible. Uh, this uh, not a law. No, I, a law that does not give the court the ability to uh, to cancel a decision by the government or or by ministers uh, that uh, seem uh, unreasonable or uh, not plausible. That's you know the legal term. The, who who uh, makes that under this law that was passed? Who makes that determination about? plausibility or reasonability mm. no longer what's the laws the new law that was passed says that any decision taken by the government as a government as a whole or by uh, any minister cannot be viewed by the court cannot be viewed by the court according to this clause of plausibility it cannot. It is free from any legal inspection in, the, in this sense. While so, if I, so if I understand you, any law, any action taken by a government official or any law passed by parliament no, is, any, any, is, any, is definitionally no, any law, plausible. Any, any move, any move taken okay. by... It's not. It's not a. It's not a law. But any uh, administrative administrative uh, uh, decision taken by the ministers 
or by the government as a whole cannot be viewed cannot it, be viewed because it's all <laughs> technically speaking plausible if you do it it's plausible and therefore it's not susceptible to judicial review yes if if uh, from the moment it is taken by a minister then it is it cannot be uh, uh, under review by the court with the plausibility uh, 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 clause because there are other clauses that could be used it's a little bit difficult it's not I have to say, I have to admit, it's not the most uh, dangerous uh, uh, step taken by the government. It, it, it is certainly the least uh, uh, dangerous of all the parts of the reform that was uh, uh, that was proposed by Justice Minister Yariv Levin uh, at the beginning of January this year. It is certainly the least uh, dangerous. But again, it points what is dangerous about it, it, it points that the government is still moving ahead with its reform. That's, I think, what made people very angry. Uh, uh, apart from, it could have uh, consequences, and important consequences. For example, uh, uh, they could appoint uh, 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 someone who has criminal uh, background that uh, uh, had uh, committed uh, criminal offenses, they could appoint him to a minister, something that is uh, uh, not possible now. So it, it is not without any consequences. It could have a lot of consequences, but still it is what has really uh, uh, made people very uh, angry is that it points that the government, despite everything, did not give up the reform and is uh, going ahead with this reform. Um, let's, before we take, uh, go further in terms of like the way, what's happening with the anti-judicial reform movement and, and how much that is to the extent, you know, how much those lessons are being sort of applied to Israel more broadly. Uh, let's, um, if you could, you mentioned Yariv Levin, who is the judiciary, uh, the judicial minister. Um, could you give us a little background on on him and on uh, Bezalel Smotrich and uh, uh, Itamar Ben Given, Given uh, just so that people understand where the power lies in Israeli society? You know, uh, for people who have not paid attention to just how far right this government has become, both at, as a function of, of religious fundamentalism and um, uh, nationalism, if you will, and, um, and, and frankly, authoritarianism, if you ask me. Uh, but um, start with Levin. Yariv Levin is a member of the Likud party, of uh, meaning Netanyahu's party. He is, uh, I think he serves already more than 10 years in the Knesset, in the parliament. Uh, last time he was elected in second place in the uh, internal primaries uh, election in the Likud, so it's, it's a second, he's quite uh, popular among, among Likud voters. He was always an opponent of the judicial system, he viewed uh, uh, the judicial system almost as an enemy. That's his, uh, um, you know, his agenda for, for many years. Uh, he's a lawyer by, by, uh, by profession uh, himself. Uh, and he, he uh, always, since he came into politics, claimed that the judicial in Israel has too much power and it should surrender its power to the executive. Uh, and uh, most of the example he gave uh, for, for how the judicial uh, system interferes with Israeli politics, with the, with the, with the government, uh, concern, uh, um, I would say, the 
Palestinian issue, meaning the rights of Palestinian, uh, how free, how much free hand will the army have in uh, in, uh, in the West Bank, um, issues like that. So he's right wing, but he uh, he's secular, he's not religious, and he belongs to the Likud party, but he's certainly on the right wing, on the right end of the Likud party. Can I it's just dr drop in a, just a quote from him that I think is also really important in this context? He said um, in his first speech to parliament, he said, the court seeks to build an Israel that is no longer, there's a quote, no longer a Jewish state under whose aegis, aegis democratic life is lived, but rather a democratic state in which, insofar as possible, a Jewish life is also lived. Uh, I shall uh, act to restore the justice system to the classic Zionist track so that in the Jewish democratic question, the Jewish character of the state will receive decisive weight it deserves. I mean, this speaks a lot to his sense of where democracy lies on yes. some type of hierarchy of 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 how the 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 country should exist. Yes, there was uh, there was quotes uh, um, from a uh, from a government uh, reunion uh, where he said uh, that the reform is needed, and as an example to why the reform is needed, he said that for example, uh, without the reform. Uh, um, Jews who do not want to live side by side by with Arabs, um, you know, uh, the, the 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 court uh, cannot rule in their favor if they don't want to live side by side with Arabs. And uh, if there will be this reform, then the the government could decide that Jews are not allowed. To live side by side with Arabs, and the uh, High Court and the uh, Supreme Court cannot interfere. So he's very. This is uh, it's, it's, it. Would be the equivalent of a, a politician in the United States saying, "We need to get rid of the Supreme Court because it's going to strike down Jim Crow laws." Essentially. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 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 Now, uh, but he is secular and is part of the Likud party. Uh, uh, Bezalel Smotrich, uh, I would say, uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir, who is now uh, the Minister of uh, uh, National Security, uh, responsible for the police uh, and, uh, and the border police, uh, he is an open racist. He, is, he was part of the Kahana movement. Uh, he was an uh, admirer of Kahana. Uh, who can I you think, explain? Can you explain that to uh, to our audience? Uh, Mayor Kahana. Yeah. Kahana is an America was an American born uh, rabbi, uh, founder of the Jewish Defense League, uh, um, and immigrated to Israel. I think in the seventies, if I'm not mistaken, founded the party, uh, the only party that was banned later from Israeli politics because it was openly racist. He called for the expulsion of uh, the Palestinian Arabs from Israel uh, openly. He said they are not entitled to, to political rights uh, and also encouraged violence against them. Uh, he was, uh, uh, his party was banned because it's racist. It's the only party uh, except for Palestinian party that was banned in the 60s. Uh, but uh, and uh, so uh, very extreme party. Uh, uh, Benvi was part of uh, this party, uh, and uh, he had on his uh, his home he had a picture on the wall, a photo of the wall of uh, Baruch Goldstein, uh, the Jewish doctor who uh, was responsible for the massacre in the uh, Ibrahimic uh, mosque in Hebron killing 39 people, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um, and he had a photo of him on the wall and he said that he is an admirer of this Baruch Goldstein. So he's really, uh, he was convicted uh, for support of terrorism 
a uh, few times, three or four times, uh, a real tug. There's no other way to uh, a racist tug. Uh, uh, um, that's uh, Itamar ben and he is responsible for the police now. But uh, um, Smotrich, who is, I think, the most dangerous of, among all these three, uh, he is the leader of what is called the Zionist, the uh, the, the religious Zionist uh, uh, party. He's a settler. Uh, ben Gvir is also a settler. He lives in Hebron. Uh, Smotrich lives in Kedumim. It's the northern part of uh, the West Bank, a very extreme uh, 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 settlement. He himself lives on uh, private Palestinian uh, land. His home was built on private Palestinian land illegally. And he is the author of what is called the, the decisive plan. Uh, he published it, uh, I think, in 2018 or 19, where uh, he outlines uh, uh, a solution He's very intelligent, he's very educated, uh, much more than uh, uh, Bengdil. Uh, he outlines more or less three options for the Palestinian uh, uh, in the West Bank uh, and Gaza. Uh, one is to accept Israeli uh, domination without political rights, uh, uh, maybe some kind of residence, right but not political right they cannot vote for the parliament meaning it's an open uh, and declared apartheid system that's one option that uh, if they don't accept that then he uh, would encourage them to immigrate or uh, expose them if necessary and if they don't uh, accept either being under apartheid, accept being uh, uh, the apartheid system or uh, being uh, exposed from their homeland, then there should be a decisive war in which uh, he doesn't say exactly what he will do to the Palestinian who uh, will not accept these two first option. But it's very clear that it's not going to be a walk in the park, what he uh, 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 promises them. Uh, so uh, he is very, very, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, he knows exactly what he's doing. He is not only the finance minister, meaning he controls of course, the budget and uh, has a lot of power as a finance minister. He is also a minister in the Ministry of Defense, and he is practically the governor of the West Bank. He received all the, what's called the civil authorities in the West Bank, all that concerns uh, build constructions, uh, uh, um, building uh, new settlements, building new outposts, uh, uh, um, legalizing uh, uh, outposts that were, were built without any permission, uh, 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 demolishing uh, Palestinian homes in Area C, and now he even says that uh, he should Israel should be active in demolishing houses, even in area B and C and A, meaning areas that are supposed to be under full uh, uh, um, uh, civil Palestinian uh, authority. Uh, if these uh, uh, constructions, if these uh, houses uh, threaten the security of Israel, that's what he said. In, uh, uh, in a, a committee in the Knesset. So he is really the most extreme. And um, uh, uh, Rotman, Simcha Rotman, who is the head of the uh, legal committee, uh, legal and constitution committee in the Israeli Knesset, who leads the reform, is part uh, of uh, Smotrich party. He's also a member of Smotrich party, so Smotrich really controls. And Smotrich, when there was this pogrom in uh, Hawara a few months ago, he said uh, in an interview, in a televised interview, that uh, Hawara should be uh, wiped off the map. 
uh, not by uh, private people, but by the state. Uh, then he somehow uh, tried to to uh, retreat this uh, statement, but this was televised and it was very clear. Uh, he is an apartheidist and a transferist. 100% he wants a new Nakba. That's his new Nakba, meaning a new expulsion of Palestinian from the homeland, as was and as happened in 1948. I it, it is so hard for me to understand how anybody, let's just start with this in this country, who is even remotely familiar with the Holocaust, can hear uh, the the plans by uh, Smotrich, um, the way that they're articulated, like literally almost down to the language he's using, and the plans themselves, is not based upon what was considered the final solution uh, during the Holocaust. It's like impossible for me to sort of like wrap my head around how somebody could not uh, immediately have that forefronted in their mind as you hear what this guy's plan is. And again, he is a prominent, extremely prominent member of this government. In fact, the, uh, an ex-Massad chief, uh, Tamir Pardo, I'm sure you're aware of this, is, you know, has come out and basically said, th these are horrible racist uh, parties in uh, the Netanyahu's government. He has said um, they are like the KKK, as if we were to put the KKK into government in, in the United States. Um, he's uh, obviously, you know, uh, talking about uh, the uh, apartheid uh, regime here as well. How does, and let's move to this question, because this is one of the questions that you, you, you were raising uh, months ago. Would the Israeli citizenry that is seeing this authoritarianism essentially being applied to them and and now it may be more of like a you know simmering uh, as opposed to a boil in terms of these things but there seems to be an awareness amongst this population would they begin to understand that what's happening to them has been basically um uh you know test piloted if you will on the the palestinian uh, people obviously like n nowhere at the same uh level but these things get deployed with Palestinians, and at one point, those same people who are able to deploy these type of things on Palestinians, they don't care who they're deploying on if they're not in, in agreement. It, is any of that starting to happen? How does an Israeli citizen who is not a supporter of, of Smotrek hear the words, instead of a final solution, the, you know, what was uh, the... the um, you know, decisive uh, plan. this decisive plan, and it's a one, three, two, three plan. You either uh, basically become second class citizens in, and uh, completely uh, give up your political rights, or uh, or two, you leave, or we make you leave, or three, we kill you. I mean, the, or we, we do, say this word, but uh, it's implied. We do whatever the next thing is that involves you not being here, mm. um, and uh, and and so. Has has any of this begin like has the, what you were talking about begun to gel or form at all? I I, I don't remember exactly what I said three months ago. I I, I tend to to forget what I said yesterday. I, I did the same. But uh, but but, uh, but, uh, but uh, I think uh, three months ago or four months ago I I did say that I think there is here an opening. Uh, um, uh, uh, for Israelis, um, for, for liberal Israelis, liberal Zionists, we're not so much aware of what's going on in the West Bank. I'm not talking about me or people like me who write for, for local call or 972, but more, more liberal uh, Zionist uh, Jews to understand it, that there is an opening now. Uh, this uh, this uh, the opening is is, is much larger. Uh, it's definitely you know one of the most uh, 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 common uh, slogans in this demonstration, especially when there is a confrontation with the police. And I heard it with my own uh, ears uh, um, that when there is this confrontation, and there were a lot of confrontation with the police, uh, these thousands of 
uh, uh, young people, mostly young people, shout, where were you, meaning the police, where were you in Hawara? Meaning the, 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 the notion that these pogromists, these people, that <clears throat> the same people who are responsible for this terrible reform that wants to, 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 to destroy what is the little that uh, there is for Israeli democracy, are the same people that are doing these pogroms. And uh, that uh, there is this uh, uh, um, direct linkage. Uh, first of all, because these are the same people, and secondly, because this is the same ideology. Uh, we have seen, and uh, uh, you know, just in the last uh, 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 demonstration in Tel Aviv, where there were 200,000 people in the street. Uh, again, Tel Aviv is 450,000 people, and two, almost half of the population of Tel Aviv was there. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in this demonstration, a young man went on stage uh, and he said, uh, our parents uh, uh, were uh, tolerant and uh, stayed uh, muted while the extremists took over. We will not accept racism. We will not be friends of the pogromists from the, the hills. Uh, uh, and at the same time, we see a very important phenomenon. Again, not directly uh, linked to the occupation, but when we see thousands of, uh, of, of, of our reservists, military reservists, saying that they will not serve in a dictatorship, and between the lines, they're saying, we, up till now, we did not like your policy, the right-wing policy. We did not like it. We did not like the settlement. We were not for it, but because we are we're part of this Zionist society, of the Israeli society, and there was this pact, uh, we served, although we didn't like it. Now, when you broke the deal between the citizens and the government, we are not ready to serve anymore. This is something that is unheard of, you know, in 56 years of occupation, there were a few hundreds uh, 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 refuseniks uh, that uh, uh, refused to serve in the military. In half a year, we have now people talking about 10,000 reservists who are saying they will not serve. So again, they are not saying directly uh, that uh, uh, the reason is the occupation, but it is between the lines. And for these young people who are now the majority of those who confront the police, and I'm talking about thousands, even tens of thousands of people who are ready to go to the streets, block main roads, uh, 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 face water cannon, face injuries, face arrests, uh, uh, and even maybe, I don't know, even uh, uh, maybe even more dangerous things. They're ready to die. I'm saying it. I, I, I do believe that there are a few thousands of young Israelis today ready to die in order to fight this government fight this right wing government and they're fighting the whole idea of this government. They're fighting its, you know, uh, clerical side. Uh, they're fighting uh, the anti-liberal, anti-women, anti-LGTB uh, 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 rights. They're fighting all this and also, and also, the occupation and the pogroms. So there is here a change. Again, the, 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 the protest movement is huge, is huge. We are talking about 
uh, uh, something like 10 every uh, the, the estimation is that 2 million people participated in demonstrations so far. Israel is 9 million. If you're talking only the Jews that do participate, it's something like uh, 2 million out of 7. It's a huge amount. It's incredible. It would be the uh, equivalent of almost 100, 100 million people in this country million, protesting. In the US, I mean, as, if, as if 100 million uh, 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 Americans would go to the streets. It's huge. It's really huge. And these people are very, very, uh, they, they, they reject not only the reform, they reject the government, this right government, and I think, and this year, you know, is the, the opportunity or something to hope, and I'm a, a, an optimist even without any reason, but I think today I have some reasons to be optimist. They are rejecting the philosophy of the right wing, not only uh, the regime of the right wing, not just this government. They are, they are rejecting this, this regime, and this is a very, very important moment in Israeli history. Maybe the most important uh, moment in Israeli history since 67, and maybe even before that. Uh, the, the idea of reservists um, uh, seeing a breach in this sort of like, uh, you know, contract essentially, where, you know, we're, we're, we're oppressing uh, Palestinians, not necessarily because we like it, but because it's going to maintain some type of civil society. I mean, one, I guess the real issue ultimately is going to be in terms of the how sustainable this is. And, you know, is if the making that contract more explicit for people, whether it's being, ex, you know, explicitly broken or not, but making that contract more explicit begins to create a certain amount of like reflection as in hey maybe this this is not a deal we should have ever made in the first place um uh, yeah, i see it very much among young people among young people it's very evident they they don't say the word zionism they don't say the word we, we should protect israel they're saying we want to protect our way of life, we want to protect democracy, we want to protect liberalism, we want to protect gay rights, we want to protect women rights, we want to, and we want also to finish, at least with these programs, with this treatment of Palestinian. There are also people saying, let's uh, finish with occupation. I, I want to be here, uh, you know, cautious and not too optimist. Right. There are more voices than before, much more, uh, but it's still a minority. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, we are here in the majority report. This is a minority report. It's still <laughs> very much a minority report. Uh, well, but, um, I want to talk uh, just lastly about a piece you wrote a, a couple, I guess, uh, uh, 10 days ago, 11 days ago, uh, about the waning days of the special relationship between the United States and Israel, because... Um, it has been my theory, I've talked about in this program, probably for close to a decade, that this is what was going to happen. That um, the, and it would, frankly, it was my argument with uh, um, right-wing sort of supportive Jews of Israel in this country is that the biggest threat to Israel is going to be a, um, the, the, the worst thing the United States can do is to allow Israel to move down further down this path because it's going to ultimately undercut support uh, for Israel in this country. And there, it's going to be, we're going to have a, a, a country that is going to be pariah-ish, um, not unlike, you know, South Africa, uh, but uh, frankly, l led by a, a much more um, entranced uh, a, a leadership. And they're going to be isolated. And it sort of feels like, well, your argument here is that that may be happening. Can you talk about that dynamic, but also in the context of what we're hearing with this mission that Tony Blinken's been on since uh, starting in June, theoretically bridging some type of peace between Saudi Arabia and Israel, and maybe, I, 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 you know, just hoping the I'm Palestinians not, go I'm away? Not, I don't. I'm not a political correspondent, so I... I, I 
my understanding of the blink of, of all this uh, uh, peace uh, uh, campaign with Saudi Arabia is more, I think, by the Biden administration to press Netanyahu to go for government with uh, with Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid, you know, throw away the more uh, extremists like uh, Bengvir and Smotrich and go for government with Benny Gantz. I don't think it's politically possible uh, for from either side. Uh, as to what I wrote, I think this is my understanding, is that the special, special relationship between the US and Israel is based uh, more than on strategic value of Israel, you know, strategic importance in terms of military, uh, more of Israel portraying itself and to the world and to the American public uh, as the only democracy in the, in the Middle East. And that was really the the, the main uh, uh, the fault, uh, the thing that really was the most uh, uh, the strongest thing. Now, uh, um, Israel was never a democracy from '48 and certainly six, since '67. Uh, but I think the U.S. could have ignored this part of its being undemocratic towards its Palestinian uh, citizens or Palestinian under occupation because they were the others. They were these Muslims, third world, uh, Middle Eastern, brown. Uh, uh, so violence against them was not encouraged but uh, tolerated in a way. Uh, from the moment that the Israeli government is repressing, uh, uh, repressing its own citizens, its own white citizens, uh, then I think for the American, for especially I think for the, the democratic administration, for the Jews, uh, for the liberal Jews and progressive Jews in the, in the US, very, very difficult to accept uh, this kind of democracy and call it the only democracy in the Middle East. And I think what is the real uh, 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 problem for Israel is again, not cutting the military aid, although I, I, I read the ex ambassadors to Israel talking about it. Uh, uh, but I think the military aid is less important what is really important is the political coverage that the U.S. has always given Israel in the U.N. Security Council, in uh, the ICC, in the ICJ, in all these international organizations uh, that they veto, even in uh, FIFA, in football. If Israel will be uh, expelled from FIFA uh, because uh, they have teams in the West Bank that are playing in the Israeli league and FIFA was not happy with that and there was a move to expel Israel from uh, FIFA and then the US intervened and they were not expelled. So this political uh, uh, umbrella uh, given by the US administration, administrations for, for decades, Republican and Democratic, uh, what is the real asset for Israel uh, 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 and not the military aid? Because to, in order to uh, control three and a half million Palestinians, you don't need F-35. You don't need, you know, very sophisticated uh, um, aircrafts or, or you, you need basically soldiers that act as police. Uh, uh, you don't need a lot of money for that. So the aid in itself is less important. What is important is the political aid. And if this aid is in somehow jeopardized, Israel is in big, big trouble. Yeah, I, and I mean, I we had a, a guest on, I guess a month or two ago, speaking about how Israel's um, 
weapons industry is now 10th in the world in terms of exports. So like they have their own self-sustaining mechanism at this point. But to your to your point about the political cover, do you think that that's been a motivating factor in why Israel has been meeting with um, other international leaders? Uh, I mean, they're trying to cozy up now to Saudi Arabia. Uh, clearly, they're developing a relationship with Narendra Modi. I, I'm not sure what the status of it, when they're meeting with China as well. Are they feeling the heat internally if they're feeling that like Biden's cooling on the relationship? I think uh, yes. Yes, generally speaking, yes. Israel, uh, in a way, uh, first of all, it you know, it has become a really Middle Eastern country, in the sense that uh, you know its regime uh, and the regime they want to establish is not that far from the regime in Egypt or in, in uh, uh, not Saudi Arabia maybe, but in Egypt and other undemocratic uh, states in the region. Uh, and then, yes, I think uh, there is this, uh, uh, they are viewing an opportunity, if it's possible, to go with Erdogan in, in, in Turkey, with uh, Putin in Russia, with Putin in Russia, maybe it's a little too risky, but going with China, uh, um, uh, going certainly with Modi in India, yes, to 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 exploit this undemocratic uh, 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 pole. But I think really it's very difficult for Israel. It is so dependent on uh, and the West, uh, both uh, cultural and cultural level and on you know high tech and all these it will be very very difficult for israel it's not russia it's russia has you know has natural resources uh, huge territory um, it could um, turkey the same i don't see israel really playing this card successfully i think they are they are thinking about it, but I don't think they have a real possibility to play this card to the end. The, the really fascinating thing about, uh, about your piece is, is that notion that all of the things that you talk about in terms of the political cover that uh, the U.S. provides Israel in the world's sort of international uh, institutions, these things are not, for the most part, a function of political pressures that are exerted on Congress, right? Like where the funding would have to come from Congress. And the APAC has been pretty successful in, in playing in Democratic primaries and really disciplining um, uh, individual Congress people within there just because of the sheer money that we're talking about. But this is money that is uh, that in a national election I'm quite sure is more deployed along the lines of, of, of Republicans. And so if I'm a president, uh, a, a Democratic president, I don't necessarily have these constraints when I know that the, the vast majority of people who are voting for me are, um, you know, if you look at the Jewish population in this country, 75 percent will vote Democratic uh, and they um, are, uh, are really unaligned with uh, these things that are happening in Israel. Um, there's a big uh, contingent of very wealthy right-wing Jews uh, in this country who are, who are funding some of these things. But um, in terms of the freedom a president has to react to these things and to say, we're no longer, you know, say to the State Department, we're no longer doing X, Y, or Z. This is all stuff that the executive has the ability to, and it's a completely different political calculation uh, one that I never really contemplated, frankly, and um, I, I, I really appreciate it. This, this, this is, again, again, more American politics, which I uh, understand a little bit less, but um, I understand what you're saying. Uh, uh, and maybe this is why it makes Israel more uh, uh, fearful, because it knows that these are moves that uh, the administration can uh, decide without Congress, 
and without the lobby, the Israeli lobby. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, we've seen that uh, with the, with the, with Obama, with the, you know the, the UN Security uh, Council uh, decision that he didn't veto uh, just uh, I think a month before ending his uh, uh, tenure in 2020. It was yeah. uh, um, so uh, yes. And he didn't need Congress uh, to do that. Just, 2016. Uh, it was, it was 2016. But yes. But yes. Exactly. And I think it's interesting because I. Uh, he, he just uh, didn't uh, veto uh, a resolution. And uh, this is something that, uh, yes, I think Israel did not forget. And um, I don't know forget. if the uh, folks who are advocating for rights for Palestinians in this country, um, uh, Jewish and non Jewish, um are are, are ha, have been if that movement that that movement to the extent that it exists in this country has not been focused on the executive branch perhaps uh and 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 maybe because of of, of a lack of that understanding but it is a really interesting uh insight that um I, I, I maybe we'll see more of uh Marone Rappaport uh, always I, I, I learned so much uh in talking to you and I really really appreciate your coming on um we will check back uh with you again uh, several months down the road to see if that opening as you as you call it has gotten uh, wider and maybe uh, more people are starting to walk through it there uh thank you so much we will link uh, to your you. pieces at 972 and uh, local call uh thanks again thank you Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to take a uh, quick break um, and head into the fun half of the program. Just a reminder, I will be on the uh, Letter Hacks um, uh, program tonight. Wow. I, I think we have, he, he draws. Yeah. While I'm talking to him. Oh, really? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Is that true? That he draws while uh, Sam's okay. speaking to him? Yeah. So do I have to like talk without moving no, no, no. my lips or something like that. So you I mean, draw. I don't think I don't it's know. like a Victorian painting. I think it's just going to be more of like, you know, he, he's drawn you before too. So I would think that he has a bit of a sense. Yeah. But I, 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 I don't, look, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to draw anything. I can do like a stick figure. Yeah. Um, um Folks, it's your support that makes this show possible. You can become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. When you do, you not only help the show survive and thrive, <clears throat> you get the uh, 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 fun half. Uh, you get the free half free of commercials. And you get the fun half, uh, and you can IM. And uh, we're talking about new stuff. You know, we'll roll out maybe some stuff in uh, September. Uh, I, I'll t as, a, as a member of a house, uh, as, a, as a housekeeping uh, note, mm. uh, August is a uh, crap show for me. Uh, I'm just telling everybody that right now. Like, like every day, I find another. We'll thing have that... some fun. I'll see you out the trail. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty fresh. Oh god, <laughs> man. I'm gonna keep rhyming. Like, I get it. The, the, it is so much easier to rhyme when you use the same word. Yeah, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's like I'm Shakespeare a, never thought of that. I'm like a total, a I'm a total whiz. You want to impress your friends about how, how your rhyming skills are? Well, you can do it by having uh, rhyming skills that are. See what I did, did right there. Uh, wow. Emma, I may uh, introduce you with rap because I am asking you to give us a rap. Oh, shh. Shit. What is happening? Now? <laughs> is the end. Wow. Uh, oh, also, don't forget justcoffee.coop, fair trade coffee, tea, or chocolate. Use the coupon code majority, get 10% off. And if you use that coupon code, you will get it off. Man, uh, how long are we going to go with this? Well, I probably years, I, I because uh, now I'm like, it's, I, it's I never had the room. ability to rhyme before. Yeah, it's gotta gotta show off that skill. Okay, so we'll have some fun. I'll see you at the trail. <laughs> What's out the trail? He was he was trying to be make freestyle. Uh, <laughs> Free, freestyle. It's hip hop language. Oh, <laughs> out the trail. Oh, yeah. We'll have some fun. A -A I'll see you out the trail. <laughs> you should come on the trail. We'll have some fun. See you out the trail. Out the trail. Um, 
Well, on ESPN, I will reveal now who we're interviewing. This is huge. I'm pretty pumped about it. We're interviewing Arian Foster. So uh, Arian Foster is coming on ESPN Wait, today. Arian Foster, who's that? I mean, he's a running back for uh, the all-time uh, rushing leader for the Houston Texans. When Wait, fantasy, what? Yeah, when fantasy football really blew up, he was like the guy on your team. And he also is just really politically conscious and was one of the first to speak out about some of like the dehumanization of, of players due to fantasy and gambling in that way. So I really want to talk to him about that particularly with the massive news over the weekend that Jonathan Taylor has requested the trade after his idiot owner tweeted a bunch of anti-labor stuff, um, probably sloshed. So, I mean, who knows? But that guy, Jim Irsay, is a total clown. I'm going to pick Arian's brain on that. A bunch of other things with go, uh, what's Folks, happening this is in the like, NFL. Uh, you know, I, and I'm, I'm not a huge NFL uh, yes. fan. I, yes. You know, I, we could have... You're a Patriots fan. Yes. I'm a Patriots fan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm a Pats fan. I'm yeah. not a huge NFL fan. I can't. I can't name really many players on yeah. other teams. But if uh, if if you have friends who are uh, a sports fan, this is a big deal. I mean, for me, the reason that I told my cousin this, yeah, and I was like, I think his name is, and I couldn't. I I had. To, I had to look back on the text, and they're like, "What?" Yeah, no, it's 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 unreal. Well, it started because he messaged me saying, "Great job on Tim Pool," and I, <laughs> so that's how I got to to first talking to Arian. But he's he's always been one of the most thoughtful players in the NFL, um, and so we're gonna chat with him for like a half hour. My cousin then, said ESPN, no, and I'm like, no, no. ESVN. No. It's it's my co-host show yeah. and they're like what how did that happen I'm yes like, i don't know i don't know either um, do you know tim pool and they were like what and that was <laughs> so tell your friends if they are uh, interested yes. in um uh sports this is a great way to introduce them to emma's show yeah i tripped into it uh but i'm gonna take full advantage ask him about a bunch of stuff then once he leaves, we have a lot of other stories to talk about. Uh, the Women's World Cup, the Jim Mercer situation, Sean Payton versus Aaron Rodgers. Uh, other stuff, youtube.com slash ESPN show at 4 p.m. today. Matt, who some do you got? Fox and friends, join us on the trail. We'll have some fun. I'll see you at the trail. <laughs> That's all I got to put uh, The left uh, reckoning is going wait, to be all exclusive. Uh, is that the second time he rhymed to, like, in that's, that No, that's, no, the, that's, the, that's the very That's, that's the very, okay. That's okay. the whole point. So, Fox and friends, join us on the trail. We'll have some fun. I'll see you at the trail. <laughs> does, 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 does he really pronounce his name as Vivek, or did he just say that so he could rhyme it with cake? Rhyme it with cake. Yeah. Does anybody pronounce it Vivek? I've always heard of Vivek. Vivek, I yeah, have no I mean, idea. Maybe it is, but Vivek. I think he pre- he does. He says that. But that's just because it rhymes with yeah, cake. Yeah, does he do it outside of the context yeah, of him yeah. rhyming Because actually, cake? I should I, tell I, you I seen that him, my real that. name is pronounced Same. Som. <laughs> but I say Sam so that I can say, and if you uh, disrespect me, you're going to get a bam. <sighs> So, Fox and friends, join us on the trail. We'll have some fun. I'll see you at the trail. So, I've had to change my name to Sam. Yeah. To rhyme it. Yeah. With, um, and like, uh, my name is Sam. My favorite food? Ham. No, a yam. Oh. Yeah. But I'll, I'll work in ham. Okay. That's I mean, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Eggs, eggs and ham. Getting very yeah. elaborate with our rhyme structures yeah. here. Yep. Or I also have, uh, if I ever get stuck, I can just go, my name is Sam. My favorite food, Sam. Oh, if people want to know a worse rhyme, by the way, Karis <laughs> One Karis One did a rap for a- Eric Adams. Oh. Um, so people, if, they, if you oh. really want to <laughs> really uh, upset yourself, go, uh, go Google that. But, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, on Left Reckoning, um, David Griscom and I for patrons uh, talked. We played two ads, Bob Dole and Bill Clinton, talking about the border. And you realize that nothing has changed on that front except the way that we do commercials <laughs> and like the style right. of it. Yeah, exactly. More shots, more yeah. cuts. There's like f- very like a uh, ham-fisted scoring, like uh, uh, foreboding music. And then like Bill Clinton on screen. So it's like fun, upbeat piano. But anyway, <laughs> uh, patreon.com is left freaking for that. I was also on the Forgotten Corner podcast with uh, Jake and Scott. Um, 
or Jeremy and Scott, and uh, we talked about. Well, they talked about me, <laughs> so that's going to be coming out too. Whoa. Forgotten Corner. They're uh, um, uh, from Medicine Hat in Canada. Mm. Um, so we talked about me being from North Dakota and not knowing that like bigger cities than the ones in North Dakota uh, were on the Canadian plains. I had no idea, but anyway, no idea Edmonton existed. But anyway, patreoncom so stuff All right, folks. Six four six two five seven thirty nine twenty. We will see you in the uh, fun half. You right. are in for it. All right, folks. Six four six two five seven thirty nine twenty. See you in the fun half. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. well, who sent us this? <laughs> Alpha males are back. 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 And the alpha males are back, back. Just as delicious as you could imagine. The alpha males are back, 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 back. Boy, back. And the alpha males are back, 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 back. Just wanna degrade the white man. Alpha males are back, back. I take all of it to my throat. Alpha males are back, 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 back. Snowflakes says what? The alpha males are back, 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 back. You are a madman. And the alpha males are back, back. Oh no, Sam Cedar! What a wow! What a fucking nightmare! What a fucking nightmare! nightmare. Bring back DJ yeah, or a couple of them. Just put them in rotation. DJ Denner. Well, the problem with those is they're like 45 seconds long, so I don't know if they're enough for the break. That's.